In section 6.2, we will use normal CDF calculators to calculate the probability of an event, which, as you recall, is the area under the density curve. Let's talk about a standard normal distribution. The standard normal distribution is a probability distribution with a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. All standard normal distributions have a z-score of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. To convert a normal distribution to a standard normal distribution, take each data value and convert the data value to a z-score. We will use the uh, sacstats.weebly.com. Click on normal distribution, then click on find probability to find the probability of different values. Here's an example. What is the probability of a normal random variable taking a value less than one standard deviation above the mean? So let's let's first break this down. It's less than one standard deviation above the mean. So we're going to actually work backwards. We're going to look at this part first. One standard deviation above the mean. Recall that for a standard normal curve, the mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one. So we have less than one standard deviation above the mean. So one standard deviation above the mean means we would be here. And we want the probability of a normal random variable taking a value less than that, less than one standard deviation above the mean. So less than one standard deviation above the mean would be the area to the left of one. The area to the left of one will give you the probability that a normal random variable will take a value in this in this uh, in this in this area. Okay, so to use technology, we would first um, go to sacstats.weebly.com, click on normal distribution, then click on find probability. Now we want the probability that we're less than one standard deviation above the mean. So make sure that this is less than. And what do we want less than? Well, we want less than 1. So let's go ahead and erase the 1.64 and have less than 1. The probability is the blue region, which is 84.13% uh, or 0. 0.8413. So the probability that z is less than 1, this is equal to 84.13% uh, or 0. 8413. Think about what this is saying. This is saying if the mean is zero, we know that this 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 uh, shaded area will give us a probability that the value of a normal random variable is going to be less than one standard deviation above the mean. And that probability is 0.8413. The reason it's such a high probability is, if you notice, most of uh, this uh, density curve is shaded, so we have such a high probability. Let's look at the second one. More than 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So let's start with this. If we are above the mean, this is the mean, how, how much above the mean are we? We're 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So this is going to be 1.5. Now we want the probability that a normal uh, random variable takes a value more than 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. More than means greater than. So we want this probability. So once again, let's go to our calculators. Please excuse uh, all these little things that are popping up. Now, in this case, we want we don't want less than. We want the probability that we're greater than 1.5 standard deviations above the mean. So x greater than 1.5, the small x represents the z-score. x greater than 1.5. And this time, greater than 1.5 is going to be this probability, which is 6.68%. If you convert that to a decimal, it'll be 0 0.0668. So the probability that a normal random variable will take a value that's more than 1.5 standard deviations away from the mean is 0 0.0668. Next one, less than 1.5 standard deviations below the mean. So once again, this is your standard normal curve, which always has a mean of 0. 
we're 1.53 standard deviations below the mean. Below the means, which means it's going to be negative 1.53. That's below the mean. And we're less than that value. So we want the probability that a normal random variable is going to have a value in this area that's less than negative 1.53. So let's go back to our calculator. This time, we want the probability that we're less than negative 1.53. So we're going to be less than negative 1.53. And this area is 0.63 or 6.3%, which is 0.0663. So the probability that a normal random variable has a value less than 1.53 below the mean, which is less than negative 1.53, is 0 0.0, what was it, 0 0.0, you know, as I get older, my, my memory just, it's not as good as it used to be, 0 0.0663. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Um, more than 2.7 standard deviations below the mean, so uh, greater than negative 2.71. Please do this on your own. Um, between 1.3 standard deviations below and 2.0 standard deviations above um, its mean. So think about this. We got 1.34 standard deviations below the mean. That's going to be, if this is your mean, 1.34 standard deviations below the mean will be negative 1.34. 2.15 standard deviations above its mean will be positive 2.15. And we want the area in between. Okay, so if we go back to our calculator, we want the area. Now, in this case, we're going to pick uh, between we have negative 1.34 and 2.15. So between negative 1.34 and 2.15, the area is 89.41% or 0.8941. What I want you guys to do is please try letters F and G, more than 3.1 standard deviations below the mean, and between 2.1 standard deviations below the mean and 1.03 standard deviations above the mean. Try these by yourselves, and we will go over these in class. Okay, let's go to the next one. Normal distribution application. So we're going to be spending a lot of time doing this. Here's an example. Well, first of all, uh, to, um, to find the probability convert normal distributions into standard normal distributions by calculating the z-scores. Once you have the z-score, calculate the probabilities given the z-scores. This is one way of doing it. We'll see another way in a, a few examples. So the distributions, uh, a distribution of scores on a recent math test were normally distributed. Notice it's a normal distribution, not a standard normal distribution. So let's first draw the normal distribution. Uh, with, there's a mean of 68 and a standard deviation of 5.5. Okay. The professor stated that a score of 60 is a minimum needed to pass. So if this is the mean, a mean sc uh, score of 60 will be here. What percentage of students passed? So percentage means we want to find the probability. In order to pass, what do we need? We need to have a score that's greater than 60. So our score needs to be greater than 60. If we want to score greater than 60, would we shade to the left of 60? Well, if we shade to the left of 60, they got 59, 58. These are not passing grades. In order to pass, you have to have a score that is greater than 60. So what percentage of students passed? In order to find this, let's first convert this into a standard normal distribution. Remember, a standard normal distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. To convert any, any raw data value, in this case 60, into a z-score, this would be 60 minus 68, so it's the, the score minus the mean, divided by the standard deviation, divided by 5.5, which will give us negative 1.45.
So our z-score is negative 1.45. The z-score corresponds to uh, 60. Now think about what that means. That means that 60% is 1.45 standard deviations below the mean. In order to pass, you have to score greater than that. So we want the area to the right. If we go to our, our calculator, We have a standard normal distribution, so we have a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, and we want the probability that we're greater than negative 1.45. That probability is 92.65%. In other words, 0.9265. But in this case, they're asking for what percent, so this will be 92.65%. So this is equal to, and I don't know why I can't get my pen back, uh, this is equal to 92.65%. Let's just pretend I wrote that down. and. I have no idea. Oh, there we go. 92.65%. Okay. So convert to a z-score and use a normal calculator. It always helps to have a visual representation so we can see where our probability is going to lie. Okay. The length in days of a normal human pregnancy um, is a normal random variable with mean equal to 266 and a standard deviation equal to 16. What is the probability that a randomly chosen pre pregnancy will last less than 246 days? Okay, so first let's draw the normal distribution. So we have a mean of two, uh, or sorry, mean of 266 and a standard deviation of 16. Standard deviation is 16. We want to figure out what is the probability that a that randomly chosen pregnancy will last less than 246 days. So 246 will be to the left of the mean. And we want to find the probability that a normally a randomly chosen pregnancy will last less than 246 days. So it's a probability that x is less than 246. Now, because of technology, we don't always have to convert this to a z-score. Here's what we could do. We know that our um, mean is 266 and our standard deviation is 16. So in our calculator, let's go back to our calculator. In our calculator, instead of the mean being zero, you could change the mean to be the mean we want, which in this case is going to be 266. We can change the standard deviation to our standard deviation, which is 16. And now we want the probability that a randomly chosen pregnancy will last less than 246 days. So we want the probability that x is less than, how many days? 246. So 246. The probability of that is 10.56% or 0.1056. Here's another one. What is the probability that a randomly chosen pregnancy will last longer than 240 days? So you, we, we always have to have a visual diagram of this. So this is the mean longer than 240 days. So this is 240. We want the probability that the pregnancy will be long, longer than 240. Now this probability is going to be pretty high since most of the uh, density curve is shaded. So let's go back. We have the same mean, same standard deviation. This time, we want the pregnancy to last more than, so greater than, 240 days. And that probability is 94.79% or 0.9479. We knew it was going to be high because most of the, uh, the area was shaded. So the probability of that is going to be 0.9479. The probability that a randomly chosen pregnancy will last in 240 days is going to be 0.9479. 9479. All right, we're gonna, we'll go over the rest of the examples um, in class. If you want to take a look at these, you can. Otherwise, we will uh, spend a decent amount of class time working these.